Sapphire Night Sky is a star generator found under the render category. It's used for creating realistic and accurate star fields, including famous constellations, based on your viewing location on Earth. Sapphire Luna, also found under the render category, replicates our Earth's moon and allows you to adjust its phase, color, glow, and other parameters. Combined together, S Luna and S Night Sky have many different applications, such as impressive sky replacements, that can be achieved right in your timeline. In this tutorial, I want to give a brief overview of S Night Sky and S Luna, and then show you how we can use the builder to combine these effects to create a sky replacement on this particular shot in my Avid timeline. Before we get started, I want to walk you through quickly what I did to prepare this shot to have the sky replaced. You'll notice in my timeline, I've actually got the shot on two different layers. V2, I've got my raw footage, and then on V1, I've got this black and white mask. And this mask, I'm actually going to use this to mask out the stars and moon that I'm going to put up here on V3. Let me just quickly step into video layer one and show you what I did to build this. Um, down on the bottom, you can see it's just the raw footage. The next thing that I did was I added an animat here to create a garbage mask um, over the horizon. And then I pulled a key on the sky using Spectromat. I'll quickly jump into effect mode so that you can see here. Um, you can, the key color is set to blue. Um, I just selected a color up here in the sky. And you, have, I have, I, you can see I have show alpha turned on so that I can see the alpha channel. So white is the part that we are going to see and black is the transparent area. But since I'm going to use this for masking out my sky, this needs to be inverted. So what I did was stepping out one more time, I inverted this with a sapphire invert, S invert under the adjust category. Um, just drop that on there and now I've inverted my mask. So now I can apply this mask to video layer three and I'll show you how we do that. But before I drop that on there, I need to apply this look to um, my footage to make it look like it's nighttime. The S film effect, which you can find underneath the stylized category, right here as film effect there is actually a preset day for night so i have that saved already in my bin up here and i'm just dropping it on my clip um, preset day for night so now i've got my foreground here the look of my foreground set so it looks like it's nighttime and now we can get started with actually putting our stars in the sky i'm going to use s night sky and s luna together in the builder to create our sky look. It's gonna be uh, much easier to do it that way than to stack them individually here in the timeline. So let's go to our builder and grab an S effect, drop it up here on V3, and then jump into our effect editor. First, before we go anywhere, you'll notice that we have under the input tracks mask, and we wanna set this to two tracks below, because you'll remember I set this up down here to be my mask for my stars. So the white area is the part that's actually going to have the stars and the moon in it. So we want our mask to be set to two tracks below. Once we've done that, now we can actually go and click edit effect, open up the builder and begin working on the look for our sky. I'll just zoom out here on my node so I can have a little bit more room. Go over to search, type in night, grab night sky, drop it onto source. And the first thing I'm going to do is change my combined mode down here to stars only. I only want to see the stars. The next thing we can do is we can choose what mode we want to do. Now I'm in LA right now, so maybe I want to make my stars look like they do in LA. Not that we can see the stars very often because there's so much light and smog, but um, we do have the option here to change the location to Los Angeles. All right, now they're a little bit dim, so I'm gonna bump up my star brightness. Okay, and now we can adjust the altitude and azimuth if we want to. You can also change the time of year. Um, it's 2016, so let's do that. And it is September right now. Okay, so now we got our date accurate. And there's all sorts of different parameters in here that we can adjust the glare, the streaks of the streak length on the stars. Um, I can make this really long and then bump up the brightness. You can see what that does. Um, I want to go for a more realistic looking sky right now. So I'm going to leave the streak, bright, streak brightness pretty low and then take down the streak length as well. And finally, the twinkle amount. So we'll just play here and we'll see how much our stars are twinkling. Um, that's a lot of twinkle. So I'm going to turn my twinkle way down, turn my 
twinkle frequency way down and uh, twinkle always will go down a bit as well. Flicker frequency can also be turned down a, a little bit. So it's, it's really barely noticeable right now. So that, that's really fine by me. Okay, now I want to put a moon in my sky. So let's move a little bit, move our nodes up and type in Luna. All right, drop that on top of night sky. And there's our moon. I'm loving it. And we can look in our presets. There's some good presets in here to get us started. So I'm going to click on load preset. And um, I'm going to start with maybe a full moon. Looks really good. This will be our sort of creative jumping off point. Um, now you'll remember I'm going to be putting this on that horizon in that shot. So we don't want my moon to be this big. So uh, the size is going to have to come way, way down here. All right. And I'm also going to change the, the location of the moon. So it's a little bit uh, further higher up in the shot. Okay. And I want to change the color a little bit just to give it more of a bluish look. Earth glow is pretty cool. You can actually make the make the um, the look of the moon change based on you know the light that's coming from the from the ground. Okay, I think our moon should be glowing a little bit more. And you can add a halo effect here if you want. Maybe very slight. Okay, so I'm gonna hit OK. All right, and now you can see we've we've uh, we're off to a good start here. Um, it, I honestly don't have to do a whole lot more than this. Uh, the moon up here is still a little bit big, so what I'll probably do is go over and uh, you know bump the size down to like 0.05 and see how that looks. That looks a little bit more realistic. Now that I've made it smaller, I'll probably make it a little bit brighter. Let's just say two. All right, um, the stars look great it's a beautiful clear sky um, what I did in my uh, example that I showed you at the beginning was I thought that it would be nice to add a little bit more atmosphere so um, let's go back to edit effect and I'll show you that we can actually use Aurora to create a very cool look um, go with Aurora under the render category I'm just dropping that on to S Luna and um, I'm going to turn off these control points here Move this up to about like that. All right, and then we're just, I just want this to look very natural, just like maybe there's a little bit of haze in the sky, maybe a little bit of moisture, some kind of cloud. So these don't need to be wild colors. Take my stroke size way down. This should be very, very subtle. Kind of think of this like you're painting almost. Bump up the softness just so there's a little bit of texture in the sky there. And um, I'm gonna turn my swirl speed down. I don't want these to I don't want this to move much. Let's see. It's moving a little bit, but it's it's gentle. Okay. Alright, there we go. That still looks a little bit bright to me. So now in my effect editor, I'll just scroll I'll just scroll down here and find my brightness and say 0.1. Okay, it takes it down a bit and then render. And we can play this and have a beautiful, very realistic looking night sky.